Partners in shine time. Blue, 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 blue. Hold, hold that thing up. There we go. Ow. Polygamy. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So real quick, before we get started on this week's episode, we got some special guests here. What's up? What's up? And Saren, if you can see Saren. Uh huh. Yeah. Adam, Saren's in the house. Adam, Roa, Melinda, Cohen. Uh, these are our friends. Friends. Um, we like you. To the end. <laughs> Or until we, we don't yeah. like you anymore. Yeah, we've traveled with you pretty much all over the world at this point. We've spent so. yeah. more time together outside of the United States than we have ever spent inside My of the United States. sister! We have. Oh, uh, Shalee's on. My sister's what on. What up, girl? What up, girl? Yeah, what's crazy, too, is that, you know, we've been in Bali, we've been in Australia, we've been in Costa Rica, we've been in Mexico. Mexico. Uh, Tanzania, Africa. Tanzania! These peeps <laughs> go hard. It's true. Yeah. Everywhere they go, we go. Yeah. We're like, oh, you guys are going to go there? Okay, we're gonna come. We're coming. We're yeah. coming. We're so, just like really hardcore fans, really. That's not really. <laughs> These two are masters in their own rights. Um, they're a couple. They're not just sitting on each other's lap because they like each other. Eight years. Um, and they're doing a lot of the same stuff that P and I do, but of course in their own beautiful, unique way. And when we connected with them in Costa Rica, we loved how committed they were to the work, how authentic and aligned you guys were, and how you base everything off integrity, mm -hmm. which is huge for us. So thank you for being that. Thank you. Thank you. What's mm -hmm. up, yes. Aaron, all you people? We love you guys. Um, yeah, I wouldn't really listen too much to them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the wise words. Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to a damn thing. Here's what I will say about, what we're talking about Adam and Melinda. Uh -huh. They are absolutely deep in people. These are some of the biggest, <laughs> characters. biggest, biggest characters, characters I have ever met. Mm -hmm. That's gonna, why you like us. You're going to hear it in their conversation. So Be you're warned. Hear regular talk from our mouths. Um, Alexi will probably be in between, and then they're going to say some stuff that is going to be straight deep in. At the end of this, we're going to take a poll, we're going to have everyone weigh in, who's no. the greatest character yeah. no. out of all of us. No. You guys have been I following Preston Preston and I are they, have they have to look at the hole. They have to look at the hole. Very close i got to give some context. So this all came up when we were in Africa, because we were talking about characters and how we're all very much characters. But then we're like, there's a couple people in here who are deep characters, like hardcore characters. Like no Preston, matter where the time, you go, know, they the are going to be a character. Preston was at the top of the list. And he, he thought he was at the he bottom. I'm the most regular dude in <laughs> the, the whole thing. <laughs> I'm just a regular ass dude. You're about to hear the shit that they're saying, and you're going to be like, oh, I get it. I get what Preston you're saying, is not regular. See, the thing was, is everybody in the conversation were all super characters. So they sure. wanted me as this dude who, you know, watches sports and beats my chest and like, it's just a regular ass dude. You watch sports? Yeah. Like, you watch sports? sports? I watch Wait, surfing and basketball. Capes. You wear capes. I do not wear capes. Um, <laughs> you yes. wear capes? That's messed up. She's taking shots at me, y'all. All right, I'm leaving. Wait, no, you have a cape? No, Adam wears Adam cape. wears cape. Oh, sure. Listen, I'm like somebody. I've been wearing cape. my onesie all over Venice, like wearing it to Whole Foods, wearing it to Gratitude. She's a character. Of she's a great. Of course, <laughs> she's a very good decision. So, I love it. so um, today we're talking juicy relationships, guys. Yes, because mm -hmm. this stuff is fun, mm -hmm. and why not talk about what makes us tick? What? ticks us off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about all of it and how we can be with it powerfully because relationships kind of run the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just romantic relationships, really relationships to everything and everyone around you. Every moment you are having a relationship moment. with every moment of yes. your life. Yeah, and, and that's truly what it is, right? Human yeah. beings, we're in relationship to our life and a lot of people say, my life's not working, my life's not working and it's because of the relationship we have with ourselves first yes. and how that relationship of self relates to everything else. Yes, that's so key. So here's a key, here's a thing to even notice about relationships. Like for instance, before this camera was rolling, I reminded Alexi that she had both butt cheeks on the seat, right? I have one and that and I have, have butt cheeks. On literally the seat. an inch on the seat, one. right? But this, really? is, this is a part <laughs> of is the married biggest life. Exaggerator this is ever. A, I have an inch. <laughs> you can see. But she just moved Did off. Didn't move. Did I know? She just I moved. Know. The point <laughs> being that well, that shit these I little <laughs> idiosyncrasies that happen in a relationship, to me, this is the funnest part. Yeah. Like, literally, last night, I've been in a really silly mood uh, over the last yeah. couple of days, so I've been humping her and like... Like a weird dog. Just doing <laughs> fun strange. stuff, right? And we were, uh, last night, what did we do? We, were, we had a whole bunch of fun last night. We did. 
Um, I don't even remember what day it is. Essentially, oh, Emil. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. I don't even first, remember what day it is. What's up, Emil? <laughs> oh, Emil, what up, what up? Yes. The point is, is that these little idiosyncrasies, the things about us that are kind of weird and interesting, like I just went and peed with the door open, and I'm sure Alexi has a conversation about that. Oh, what did I do earlier that you were like, um, I said something to somebody and you were like, Oh, we're on the phone with anyone and he's just being anyone. super <laughs> with anyone and he's just being super weird and short and not really listening and just saying stuff to be funny. And the person's like, um, what? Hello? Hi. Uh, sorry. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we've been having an ongoing all... thing because I have suddenly somehow forgotten or, or just... Uh, maybe I never knew, but I'm having a tremendous amount of trouble flushing toilets. She can't flush. So no. here's the thing. Here's the thing. So she's yeah, she, that would be she will difficult. leave. It doesn't matter <laughs> if it's our house, if it's someone else's house, if it's That's an Airbnb. That's my. I'm trying. She's just like not like, flushing it's not toilets. That I'm forgetting. It's that I'm unable to operate the mechanics of the toilet. And I didn't know what was worse because I thought at that first work. that she was trying to conserve water, but now I found out that she she thinks she's flushing it and then she just kind of gives up. <laughs> She's like one flush, one and done. I've tried different <laughs> styles of techniques. I'm like, maybe I'll do it really fast and quick and then I'll just walk away. Maybe I'll hold it for a while. Like, you really don't have that much leeway. You've got like, you know. duration of holding down. Couple and pressure. Yes. He Couple said pressure doesn't make a difference. Yeah. I think it does sometimes. <laughs> wait, I mean, wait, there's a okay. distinct flush critical mass point. So this is good. Let's, let's lead off of this. <laughs> we'll go into that. What is... Because that could be really annoying for somebody. Uh -huh. Like if your partner is constantly, <laughs> Adam's like, yeah. He's literally <laughs> has to come in and flush the toilet for me. I've not been able to do it. Ha was there poop in the toilet? Once. once <laughs> Number two was, was, was a parent. But I did, I did, I did, to be fair, I put a little piece of toilet paper over, over the toilet. <laughs> I was like, you don't have to see this, man. You don't have to see this. <laughs> Someone said you need an app for that. <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah. Awesome. All right, so what is something that in your relationship, you guys have been together eight years. So over that time together, what is something that like annoys the crap out of you, but you've come to terms with it and embraced it in some way? Ooh, Honesty. Great question. That's, that's so a great, great And then we get question. to, you guys get to answer that same question. You know what? Um, okay, this Careful. is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, I'm listening. We're about to start <laughs> fights up in here. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's go. I used to get really annoyed at uh, how emotionally vulnerable she is, how mm -hmm. like open she is with her emotions. And so in the beginning of our relationship, I was, I had so many walls up, mm -hmm. so many walls up and, and vulnerability was a sign of weakness, I thought. And mm -hmm. crying was definitely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And so if we were in a uh, argument or even if we were like watching a movie, I was like, why are you crying? What are you crying about? <laughs> And so it was brutal. He'd be literally be like, "If you're gonna cry that loud, can you please go in the other room?" I need to focus. I need to focus. I was like, "Listen, listen. listen if this conversation has sobbing. devolved, devolved into just sobbing, we can't have, we can't communicate. Devolved. And so, like, one of us has to leave the room and until we can go, have this conversation. I would conversation. go sit in the bedroom by myself, like." Tears streaming down my face. You guys and are terrible. And so what's what's interesting about that is it was really annoying to me mm -hmm. because I was being triggered by the parts of myself that I wasn't allowing mm. like to to be a part of the relationship. Yep. That's like, the key right is, there. Is off limits. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the yeah. key, right? Like we often get triggered by the things that we need to access or are resisting most, right? Totally. Yeah, and so now I'm really inspired by her emotional vulnerability. Even when I feel that thing like, man, she's crying a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still, You're I'll still, still crying. Like, wow, still crying. I, I want to, <laughs> wow. my goal is to move further in that direction. Yeah. Right? Mm. yeah. Okay, Melinda, what's it for you? Um, the thing that's come to mind, really, I don't feel like I get that annoyed with you most of the time. It's usually the other way. It around. happens. It happens. But it definitely happens. Don't so lie. The, thing that's, <laughs> the thing that stands out right now when, I, when I'm thinking back is uh, we were in Hawaii and we were, we had planned to, we went there to do deep healing work. We'd been moving through a lot of this super intense emotional stuff and we like had like a day off and we were like, we're just going to go and have like a great day on the beach. And... It was like this whole long thing we were going to go here and then there was an app, like a landslide and we couldn't so we ended up going somewhere else and half the day was already over and I was really ready to like drop in and just like be in nature and, and have a good time and we found this beach but there was a storm coming in and all I wanted to do was, it was a naked beach, all I wanted to do was just take my clothes off and just like run into the ocean and just not worry about anything else 
And Adam was like, but we don't have a place where like we're safe from the wind. Like we need to we need a place <laughs> so that's practical. safe from those the storms, wind. Those storms it was crazy. very practical. Very, very practical. practical. So he's like, I just can't I can't settle. And his energy was like unsettled, not super present with the apparent beauty that was all around us. <laughs> like, can't we just be present with the goddamn beauty? Like, Can I ask you a question? To... It's Hold beautiful on. here, goddamn it! <laughs> Before you say anything. So, I got annoyed and I sort of like, I felt like he was infringing on my nature experience, which is very important to me. Mm -hmm. And later when the storm did come in, I realized, I was like, the truth of the matter is that we as human beings, we don't have fur, we don't have a shell, like we are extremely vulnerable to the elements. So mm -hmm. you've got this wind, you've got the rain, like, yes, I want a place that, that it feels safe and protected. And, I'm, and I wasn't able to have the foresight mm. to be able to see that that was going to be necessary at some point. Yeah. But he was. And also understanding that part of the reason, and we uncovered this together, but part of the reason why he, he struggles is because like it's it's more difficult for him to feel safe in nature than it is for me. And yeah. for me to have com mm. compassion for that. That's because there'll be a million mosquitoes <laughs> and she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh Wait, so not. we learned this actually in, in Mexico in Tulum that Melinda mm -hmm. and I are pretty much mosquito repellent. They, we have communed with nature. We made an agreement they, with they them. Will, they will bite us, but we will, we will just not we be embrace resistance. It. To and, the and these two, in their, in their man experience, were having multiple mosquito oh my God. attacks. And we weren't experiencing any of that. Yeah. yeah. Very it's, sorry for you. They come after me. <laughs> you guys have the same story. So, so uh, We have the same one, too. Question, question for you guys, right? Okay. Wait, they so, were going to answer the same thing. Oh, though. are we doing that? Yeah. Or you can have a new no, question. No, go ahead. Answer it. Hmm. Go for it. Um, well, I want to touch on something just as a, and, and Charles, I saw your question. We will definitely dive into that. Um, just as a, like a sort of aside to what you said, because it's really huge. Um, men, as we become more and more conscious and aware of ourselves and what is, um, I find that the biggest shift can be when we stop trying to fix our partners and just start mm -hmm. honoring what is. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I heard you speak about that, to me that's what came up, was this, this idea around, and I, I find it, I do it, I don't do it as much. When we first got together, yeah, he's gotten better. she sure. would be crying or something would happen and I would be trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. If we got into an argument, um, it would be more her. I, I was, I'm more of the like, F it, like, let's just let some time go past. But like, um, I'm a fixer. Yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about it. Like, all night. All yeah. night. Yeah. Until <laughs> I feel better. Right. <laughs> Such a girl. Thing. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I think also adapting, um, as I've stepped more and more into the work, I'm recognizing and owning the idea that, that no one's broken. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. No one's yeah. broken. We, we, we're trained to think that we're broken and we need to be fixed yeah yeah and when you recognize that no one is broken that means she's not broken and so what am i trying to fix that's yes. it right and it's also that thing of like we're trying to if we're not trying to fix them we're trying to change them and morph them into a version of us to mm -hmm. our preferences yeah but yeah. but we didn't fall in love with our preferences we fell in love with the person that we're with right mm -hmm. but we soon forget that when things get a little sticky and commingled and something interesting about that as well i think when we as women like mm -hmm. men try and fix mm -hmm. women try to change and go like why doesn't he understand me why doesn't he basically think like a woman thinks because mm -hmm. he's not a woman mm -hmm. he's a man mm -hmm. and we get to really respect that and appreciate that while also holding for what we need mm -hmm. yeah. right and it's a, such a delicate dance and balance and i think for me i've noticed that when i pull back the reins of trying to shape him into what I need mm -hmm. and give him the space to show up for me how he needs to show up for me, it creates so much more freedom in our relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also something that is interesting that I'm just kind of thinking about now is I think a lot of times my emotion, my like emotional outbursts that I would have of like just tremendous tears or whatever it was, um, felt to you, and you can confirm this or not, like it was a manipulation device. It was like, oh, I'm just going to I'm just gonna fall apart and and use my emotion as like a way to make you feel uh -huh. guilty, make yeah, you feel he bad. Yeah, that too. Um, and it's not you know that's not fair kind of thing. Did yeah. That, did that? He, definitely. Yeah. 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 No, he, I, and, and I went through some of that. A thing for anybody who grew up as a quote unquote masculine man in the in a Western society, 
what crime equals <laughs> to a male growing up in a masculine society is, um, and this is something I had to be with, and e even in our relationship, because to me, if I'm playing on the playground, and we're both getting really rough, right? Or we're playing basketball, or whatever we're doing, we're playing tag, doesn't matter what it is. And we're both getting really rough. Whoever cries first wins. And so this, this conversation that loses. loses. Yes. Or no, or whoever wins. cries first wins because whoever cries first, and this is the story that I had running. And this is the story I'm, the right one. I'm projecting into Western culture and masculine men. So <clears throat> what it would look like is two of my friends or a girl are, we're all playing. We're playing hard. Something happens. Whoever cries and says, oh, my elbow, or whatever the case may be, whoever's crying wins because whoever was playing with them now gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I always equated or have equated, if you cry, A, you're a little punk ass sissy. B, and, and this is like, I get all <laughs> of this is not truth, Super right? Super helpful. Uh, <laughs> um, and <laughs> B, it's like, okay, now everything goes out the window. And even if you were just as shady as I was or playing just as rough as I was, I now get in trouble because you cried first. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I want to bring up something too with yeah. this because a man's version of crying, like Preston, his version of crying, his emotions come out in anger. And for for a long time for me, that was not okay. It was just not okay because that's not how I process things and that didn't equate to how I thought it should be dealt with. But when I understood that that was his way of showing his emotion, and stop taking that personally because I took it so personally. I took it as an attack, yeah. just like he was taking my crying as an attack, as, an, as like a manipulation. When I stopped taking that personally, I could see that that's his version of hurt. Mm -hmm. And we all have our mm -hmm. own version of hurt. And sometimes that's tears, sometimes that's anger, sometimes it's pulling out and retracting. And we get shutting to down. shutting down and we get to understand what our partner's version is. And I think something that's really important for me is. Um, the word you used was manipulation, mm -hmm. right? And so I would take it as I'm as someone's trying to manipulate me. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is that uh, if you react, if you're triggered that strongly by someone trying to manipulate you, I personally believe that it's because of your fear that you can be manipulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so as you step into really ownership of who you are, what you want, what your values are. Mm -hmm. When you know that and you can, we can, you can stand in that, the chances of you being manipulated into mm. something else mm -hmm. go way down. So true. And so when you see it in someone, you're like, oh, that's really interesting that they're trying to manipulate me like I can't see it, yeah. but you're not, you're not emotionally triggered in the same way. <clears throat> well, right, and the trigger allows for it to happen. Right? Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Like you're being triggered by it because you know that they're getting in somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then and then that cycle of, well, I can't figure out why I'm being triggered, so fuck you. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> exactly. It's your fault, Cameron. It's totally your fault. You know what's interesting about that as well is really what's so the underpinning of the triggered is us believing stories. Yeah. And once, whenever I can uh, sort of piece apart the narrative that I have running at that time that I've made true with a capital T and bring it down to a lowercase t. The moment it becomes a lowercase t, I have space and an opportunity to see what's really there. And what's usually there is, for the most part, we're always having a conversation with ourselves. So, um, you know, let's say uh, Alexi is triggered by, or I'm, you know, sort of poking and pinning and, and doing things that make her upset. And she can still answer that question, by the way, if you guys are still curious about what uh, a noise. We are. Yeah. <laughs> we want to know. We definitely we have some ideas. Uh -huh. We'd like to know for sure. Uh -huh. His <laughs> denial of being a character. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. What's usually under that though is something that has it has more to do with me than it has to do with her. And yeah. a part of our agreement in our relationship, even in general, is we have a deep understanding that ninety nine point nine nine percent of the stuff that we're experiencing. Um, we brought before it's like we had it's like a little backpack that we brought with us before <laughs> we, we even met each other and yeah. so you know let's say I bring anger and um, you know resentment and whatever else is packed in that little backpack that is my dharma to work through in this lifetime and she brings abandonment and you know uh, hurt feelings and whatever other backpack she has and so all this that's usually happening is at, at, at a um, 
let's say, at a base level, is these two egos, these two wounded little nine and 13 year olds are arguing to see who can be the victim, mm -hmm. who can be more of the victim from our little bag of tricks that we take out every time some shit happens. And yeah. so for us, that's how we, we sort of get under what's usually running in front of the truth of our relationship, which is pure magic and love. Yeah, and what's interesting is the backpacks, at least for me, and you guys can say if this is true for you, my backpacks of wounds that I bring into the relationship, whenever I'm in my shit, it's I'm trying to validate that story mm -hmm. of the wounded four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old yeah. self. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to unpack my backpack and say, see, this is true. See, this is true. See, yep. this mm -hmm. is true. Real talk. And, and that's what I'm fighting for. Yeah. And when I pull back and I go, wait, 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 I'm fighting for that to be right, right versus for this to be right and to be in the present moment. It's so fascinating. It's fascinating. Well, I think, I think part of that is human beings are so afraid of the unknown, yes. right? We're so afraid of the unknown. And so the backpack is something you've had your entire life. Yep. So you actually don't know what it's like to not have <laughs> that, 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 like, uh, that stuff on your backpack. <laughs> and so the idea, you'll, your ego will fight to keep it in the backpack because it knows, hey, you've made it this far with it, so yep. you're good. Yeah, but you're when safe. it's gone, what happens then? Mm -hmm. That's it. What happens if you see her crying, you start crying? Blah! What's going to happen yeah. then? <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, him. so... so uh, the unknown, man, that's something that I love about both of you is, is you dive into the unknown. It's you fun. You love getting really uncomfortable. Um, you got to answer this question, yeah. though. What annoys you about <laughs> Preston? They about to start a fight up in here, y'all. <laughs> it's going down. Let's go. Um, okay, so what annoys me about Preston that I have truly embraced, and it, I got, it got triggered today. It got triggered today. Awesome. Uh, yes. Um, he, he leaves papers and receipts. Kind of everywhere. Oh, so does he. Like, Whoa! Whoa! This is Alexi. <laughs> so does he. She's like. She's like earlier. She's like. There's nothing. Like, Adam's perfect. Yeah. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, him too. Receipts. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some things. No. Yeah. <laughs> he literally leaves like paper and like weird little things that I'm like, it either goes in the trash or it goes somewhere, but it definitely doesn't go there. <laughs> it definitely doesn't go there. Does definitely. he do it because he's trying to yeah, potentially but... maybe, Adam literally justified to me, I was like, why do you keep your receipt for the um, <laughs> $2.99 burrito that you bought at the drive-thru? <laughs> well, if I get food poisoning, then I want to know that I can go back and, and like have proof well, that it's my... <laughs> This was a while ago. Literally... This was a long time ago. This She's making it sound like... <laughs> Like this is like last week. It was a while. I've kept it for seven months in case. I just <laughs> in case. He's got like a whole box of receipts. The Mexican restaurant was a little shady. I'm just gonna hold on to that. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Uh, no, no. Seriously, I think it's it's the papers. It's mm. like the little because not that I'm a neat freak. Like our office is a mess. Our room's a mess right now. But I I like things when things have a place. She's I like a Virgo. To go in their place. Just go to your place. Go to your place. Go to your home. <laughs> that's it. Go to your home. All right. Mm. What what do I do that annoys you? No, let's just sit in that. Um, <laughs> By the way, if this is entertaining for you guys, please hit the share button and share it with the world. And some hearts. We like the hearts. We do like we the do little like hearts. It's and all like that a love dopamine and stuff. serotonin hit for us. It's like <laughs> shot of love to my soul. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Guys. Here's a question for you guys because um, it's it's rare to see in my experience, it's rare to see people uh, who have their lives so intertwined. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like yes. work play, travel, hearts, hearts, hearts. everything, all those hearts. Yeah. <laughs> it feels good. It's like a high. So, um, you guys do it at a level that is really inspiring. It's, it's really inspiring. You guys are with each other uh, probably as much as we're with each other. All the damn time. Is, all, all the damn, damn time. time. All so the damn time. My question for you guys is what's the balance of, of work, play, do you do you separate that? Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and do yeah. you set aside time for yourself to do those, or do you do it together? How's that look? It's a little bit of everything. Yeah. I, so here's the thing: we don't use words like balance. Um, or, because, or work <laughs> and play. Yeah, yeah. Because all those things are just it, we're just lifing, and we're mm -hmm. yes, we are consciously aware that certain things need to happen. Yeah. So like last night, tell them what I said to you about Tell them. The, Tell them. the man and woman dynamic and when I, what I had to come do in order to get us to watch Netflix and chill. So, uh, <laughs> so I was finishing something that, we, we've been in Bali, uh -huh. 
-huh. And we just got back and I had to finish something that had to be out by last night and mm -hmm. it wasn't complete yet. Mm -hmm. So it was probably what, 9.40 at yes. night? Yes, but you're just talking about the one instance. We're talking about, yeah. that's all the damn For time. For the most part, yeah. I work a lot. Uh, <laughs> I do. I love what I do, and I'm 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 a very ambitious and driven person. You heard his justification here. She she didn't just go for the the well, thing. Well, you're asking me to explain, so All right. explain. <laughs> just, just explain. So just I love explain. what I do, and I do. because I love what I do. But it's the same thing about I'm this. I'm so balance. committed to all of you. That's <laughs> the reason why. It's this balance thing, though. Like when when your work is your play, and your play is your work, mm. there is no fucking line. And I I yes, I get to shut my laptop and turn off, and we do that quite a bit. We took an afternoon. Like ride today in the midst of like super productive day um, but it's just a part of the the flow the thing that we do yeah so, so what did you have to come do you had to make it make her I had that and I out? said hey oh yeah earth to, to wife can you stop working <laughs> and I said this is funny because usually the roles are reversed. Usually the wife comes in and you know the guys still like, plugging away. What are you doing? And like I'm in the doorway here, like, come on, baby, you. you don't want to hang. I'm doing dances and shit. And she's like, no, 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 it's okay. I was like, as I just gotta like, finish this one. He's like that bird that's doing the whole. <laughs> Kaka! 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 I'm like, can I get some sex? Um, so I cried. I want sex. Yes. <laughs> um. What was I going to say? Relationship dynamic goals. There we go. Get yeah. it, girl. Um, first of all, uh, thank you guys for watching this yeah. and for tuning in, for being with us. If you are just checking in, this is Adam Roa. This is Melinda Cohen. Yep. My name is Preston Smiles. Alexi Pano. This is my wife. They are a polygamous couple that are looking for... No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> We've been together eight years. Yes. We're not married. Um, they do, have a dog. You guys Deeply get, in love. We do, have a dog. Okay. That's our child. She's right here. People, Do people come at you guys about that? About the eight-year no marriage thing? For a while, it was interesting because there was a lot... And they want you to speak up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. There was a wave <clears throat> of, uh, of people getting married in um, Adam's hometown. So mm. we would go back to, for, to all the mm. weddings. And, um, and there was a thing definitely like, at first it was like the question was asked like, when are you guys going to get married? And then we probably didn't do a very satisfying response because we were just kind of like, whenever we feel like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and eventually I think people stopped asking because they just assumed there was probably something horribly wrong. Well, it's interesting to see how many people <laughs> assumed that she really wanted to get married uh, yeah. and that I was, didn't was freaking to. out or was opposed to it commit. or whatever, that I didn't want to commit. Yeah. And, um. That was what was most interesting about it, was mm. the projections that people were putting on to our relationship. Yeah, for sure. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, we just had a question that I think we should dive into. Um, Jacqueline Hill, hold on, I want to pull it. We're looking at our computer to read the comments. She said, what are your thoughts on sharing vulnerability? Did Jacqueline, I say sharing or shaming? Shaming. Shaming vulnerability. Mm. And then she wrote something else. Did go down, further down, this way. Uh -huh. um, and then she said, further down, further down, um, Christy Katz, what's up? Uh, so she, basically, what are your thoughts on shaming vulnerability? So when people share, sometimes they get shamed for being, for, like, so if I share my vulnerability with you and you can't handle or take it, uh -huh. then you shame me for it. I can take it. Yeah, you can take it. <laughs> We've tried. We've practiced a couple times. Uh -huh. Um... <laughs> That's interesting because I think a lot of people have the fear that if they share a part of themselves, and this yeah. really is important in relationships, yeah. right? If they share a part of themselves, then they're open for ridicule, they're open for looking bad, they're open for an ego death, mm -hmm. and it, it can be the, the scariest thing. However, I, my belief is personally, and I'm not perfect at this, I'm always working at this, is vulnerability means there's still something at stake. Vulnerability means that you're still thinking, well, if I share this, I could potentially get hurt. So mm -hmm. for me, the work is to not be vulnerable, but to be transparent, to own my truth and to share my truth as if it's my truth and it matters because it's mine at, in, in no regard to what anyone else thinks or feels or how they might take it. Yeah. Now, massive disclaimer and asterisk, I want to add to that. That doesn't mean that I go blaming people with my shit. 
Yeah. That means I take responsibility 100% for what I'm sharing, for what I'm feeling, for what I'm being with. And in that way, I feel like it takes the, the um, need to blame or shame out of it. Because a lot of people will make you wrong for sharing your vulnerability if yeah. you're blaming them. <clears throat> exactly. This is what I was about to say because Rosie just wrote, I sh I sh I've shared it and it gets thrown back in my face to hurt me. Mm -hmm. This is a very common statement that yeah. we hear quite a bit. And so I want to add a... Uh, um, I'm going to piggyback Alexi's statement and add that one of the things you really get to get clear about is how you're sharing your vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. And so if we choose to call ourselves, you know, conscious choice makers, which is what, you know, in my opinion, we all, not we all should be, it's what I strive for, to be a conscious choice maker. If I strive to be a conscious choice maker, if I try to strive to be the best version of myself, when I am sharing my quote unquote vulnerabilities, the best thing I could do, especially if my vulnerabilities have to do with my partner, is be very, very conscious about the way I'm using the language to share said thing. Yeah. Now, we also understand that 7% of communication is actual verbal. 38% of it is physiology and tonality. And I forget what the other percentage is. Uh, 55, 55 yeah. is... Um, physiology. Yeah, okay. The point being is that... <laughs> I don't have the facts. So. Yes, non, the nonverbal stuff is really mm, what most people are picking up on. This energetic exchange of, okay, well, I'm feeling this way because what you did was... That's blame, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you made me feel this yes. way. Right. No one can make you feel any way. And nobody ever. wants to hold that, mm -hmm. especially over and over and over again. Remember, one of the best things we do is we catch ourselves trying to get to the top of victimhood. And so one of the rules we have in our relationship, whenever we do fight, because we do fight, we shit, do. shit comes up. Guess what? We're human. Surprise. <laughs> and when it comes up, one of the things we always come back to is how can I take 100% responsibility? Mm -hmm. um, and we have to equal 200. And the thing that I will also add to this is... <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm just going to sit in this for a moment because this is a very important subject. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, Real quick, I just want to touch on Deanna. I think I'm saying your name right. Deanna, Deanna asked about our relationship course. You guys are looking at the blueprint behind us of mm -hmm. our relationship course that we're putting together. Mm -hmm. um, Preston and I have learned a lot of things the hard way. <laughs> We've got two stubborn ass people who <laughs> got together in a relationship and really learned how to be with each other in a powerful way. And, and not try and step on each other or, or quelch each other's fire. So we're putting together a program for people who see themselves as powerful, who see themselves as maybe stubborn and holding on to their mm -hmm. beliefs and want to really transcend that. So that's coming out early 2017. Yeah, and I want to touch on um, ass assuming that they're not blaming, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're actually, if you're legitimately... Um, being shamed. Being shamed. Like you feel something, you've expressed that, right? For me, it's kind of a risk-reward equation <laughs> mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. which is you express something and the risk of that is that it gets thrown back in your face. But if you don't express it, mm. if you don't express it, then what happens to it? It gets stored inside of you. Yes. It gets stored in your body. That you're still feeling it and, they, and you're not processing through it. And they pick it up anyway. Yeah. And so it's going to come out at some point or it's going to eat at you and it's going to show up in your physical health. It's going to show up in your mental health. In Boom. your money health and everything. Everything. And, 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 another question, I have to say this. Yeah. How do you know you're being shamed? That's the question to sit in. Because a lot of times, so we take these things and we throw things out, right? It doesn't always mean that's the case. Back to stories, back to interpretations. How do you know you're being shamed for your vulnerability? Mm. Because, you know, we could be having a conversation and you could share something like, you know, the sky is blue today. And you say it in a particular way and there's something happening under there that I have no fucking clue about, right? And I go, yeah, I guess, I guess it's blue, huh? I don't give a fuck. Right? Just not, it has nothing to do with you. Right. You could take that 
right. and run with it. And how many times do we do that in All relationship? Run with we it. We take something that's so minute that the other person wasn't even intending on giving us and we take it and go, this is what this person meant. This is what they are doing to me. This is how they're trying to make me feel. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to feel like shit all day and blame them for my misery. But that's why it <laughs> always comes back to like every answer will come back to doing the work on yourself. Yes. It's Always. really clear because the question is, how do I know I'm being shamed? How, can I trust my own perception of yes. what's happening in relationships? <clears throat> and it's it's uh, might be a long path for some people. For mm -hmm. me, it was a really long path of figuring out what my triggers are, what my limiting beliefs are, what mm -hmm. my wounding is, mm -hmm. in order to be able to say, wow, when she cries, the reason that I'm being triggered and the reason I'm getting upset is because... I'm not comfortable with that part of myself. Boom. Yeah, that's right? it. And so yeah, it comes is. back to working on yourself. Mm -hmm. And also I'll say that like everyone has different things, but I think a lot of women can relate to being able to access emotion very easily and, and allowing vulnerability to flow through fairly easily. Um, and what I've, in my experience, like because that's so easy, the easier choice is to dissolve into the emotion and uh. then let the emotion kind of take over instead uh. of going okay, I'm experiencing an emotion. How is this really serving me? And is it really something that I get to collapse into and now it becomes this like huge sob fest? <laughs> or do I get to actually process this for a second with myself before taking it to my partner? Yeah. Yes. And seeing, okay, maybe I can distance myself from this. Maybe it doesn't have to be this huge dramatic experience. Maybe I can get to the core and actually enter into the conversation with my partner mm. once I'm on the other side of the, like, the severity of it yeah. because it can be very difficult to have a conversation when you're deeply, deeply vulnerable and fully like in the emotion. It's, I, it's I a game that. changer. Yeah, it is a game changer. That. If you can get to um, an agreement in your relationship to be able to say, I just need yeah. five minutes, yes. ten minutes, you guys, you whatever guys do it that, is. Right? Yeah. If you can get to that point and create that agreement between the two of you, it yeah. will... It will give you the space to do exactly what Melinda is saying, which is get in tune with what am I really feeling and become the observer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to do when you're looking at someone yes. who has triggered you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, it's got to be them. It's got to be them. Right? Yeah. It's all I love you. that you brought that up, though, because even in relationship with the self, like yeah. so many people experience overwhelm. Yeah. Mm. So many people experience stress, overwhelm, whether it's in their job or with their family. And they're in this like chaotic thing. And I get it a lot because I'm handling a lot, right? And I'll find myself spiraling and it's so easy for me to dive into that shithole so of overwhelm. Yeah. So easy for me. But what I need to do is just stop, mm -hmm. breathe, come back, come back to self, recognize that I am not overwhelm. Overwhelm is something I'm experiencing and it's kind of flowing through. And I get to use overwhelm as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I get to say, okay, you're here. What are you trying to show me? Mm -hmm. What am I actually really feeling? What am I actually really in need of? Mm -hmm. And we had a beautiful moment um, that I actually shared with my soul school tribe in Bali. I was feeling overwhelmed with all the stuff that was coming up and the emotion came up and we were out to breakfast and Preston said something to me that was just really powerful. He basically said, you know, I'm here for you. Let me just like say, say what it is and let me just, I'm here for you. And he just like hugged me and it just gave me permission mm -hmm to just be in the space and not let it overtake me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing in relationship. We need to be in the space, not let it overtake us so that we can be powerfully with our partners mm -hmm. or with ourselves. Amen. And now I'm about to make it a little controversial just for a second. <laughs> As he does. <coughs> As he does. <laughs> As um, he does. So um, one of the things, and this is to the fellas, and actually it's to everybody, because you can talk to your man or your partner about this. Whoever decides... Or let's not just say decides. Let's say whoever is filling up the masculine more often, right? Um, I don't want to start this. I've had many clients who, and spoken to many people, who have found themselves less attracted to their men, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons that we've sort of unearthed, and I had a conversation with a mentor about this, is because um, while women women, and I'm just generalizing here, quite a bit, say, I, I just want him to talk. I just communicate. The one thing I want is just more communication from him, right? Um, and then when men do communicate from their emotions, when they do communicate, which is because the masculine is zero. The masculine never changes. It's, it's, it's unchangeable. It, it's solid. 
The feminine is always flowing, always changing, always in flux, right? So when a man does share what he's experiencing from the feminine, which is what happens when anybody is sharing, um, I have found that women become less attracted to their men. Why? Because they must fill up the masculine. And if they continuously have to fill up the masculine because their man is constantly having these breakdowns and shit's happening and Bob at work said this and all of those things, when that stuff is happening, there's no space for the woman to have that experience. And so um, my advice to men is find other men who can hold space for you and have those conversations because not everything needs to be shared with your woman. Now, I share a lot with Alexi, but when it really goes down, I'll call Adam, I'll call Hinari, I'll call Brown, I'll call all my best friends and say, listen, I wanna punch something. I wanna, I wanna choke somebody and just knee them in the face. It, it goes morbid, right? But all I need to do, because all these emotions, they're just like the clouds, they're just flowing in and out, life is just lifing always, right? And so going to my buddy to have that conversation, as opposed to going to my woman, allows her to have the moment she had in Bali mm -hmm. because she knows that I can be a safe space to hold space for her. Does this mean that I don't ever get to be vulnerable or transparent? Fuck no. Of course I do. I've, I've cried in front of her more than anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. And I still love him. And she still loves me, <laughs> right? Because I'm, I'm a sexy chocolate dude, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, the point being though, is like, fellas, it's not always a great idea to keep sharing everything with your woman. So um, I just wanted to put that in a space and also remind you that when you shift your neurology and your biology, you create a whole bunch of space. So what we were talking about earlier when two people are in an argument, Alexi and I figured this out the hard way. I get flooded. And what flooded means is that fight or flight cortisol rushes through my body and I don't have as much brain capacity to actually even process anything. And so Alexi with her super brain over here is like, and just coming at me and in that flooding you sound like a chicken apparently not a chicken you sound like a beautiful <laughs> sexy chicken um beautiful, sexy chicken still a chicken no the chickens are awesome that's still why i don't chicken. eat them um so adam killed a chicken and, and um i did i killed a chicken in tanzania yeah. it was did a beautiful did you post the video experience. i haven't posted different the video story. Yet. Different oh my story. god different story but i want to i want to say uh because he said something controversial so i'm gonna <laughs> say the other side of <laughs> this um it may not always be uh, the place to just share everything that you're experiencing is, is what he's talking about because there, there are energetic roles that we play in the relationship. It comes down to intention. Mm. Mm. What yeah. is the reason that you are sh choosing to share? Are you trying to emotionally dump on your woman? Exactly. What is the reason? If, the, if, there, if it is just I'm experiencing all this shit and I don't have anywhere else to put it, Take this! The, the yeah. other person in your relationship <laughs> is probably not the person that you want to just throw all that on, right? You have, go to your friends, go to your family who you, you trust in that situation. But if, if you're feeling something that, that is bringing you to tears and you're, you're very convinced that this is something that should be shared, then that's the time to share it. That's how you know the difference. It's the intention behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also want to bring up too, there's a lot of ladies that are in relationships or a lot of men in relationships that experience their partner as stonewalling. Mm -hmm. They don't share anything. So that was me. Yeah, that was me for a long time too. So Preston has only seen the emotional and vulnerable side. Um, but I used to be ice cold, you know, mm -hmm. and... Would not I share. That was terrible. We're so similar. <laughs> you and I are so yeah, similar. We are so similar. So many ways. <laughs> and I used to just shut down, shut people off. I had no qualms with like if one person did one little thing wrong, bye, goodbye, don't need to talk to you anymore. Mm. And it was to keep myself safe. And a lot of my exes had the experience of I can't get through. There's there's no give. There's no give. There's no let up. And I can't get through. And for me, it was a badge of honor I wore mm -hmm. for a really long time because. It kept me safe and going back to what you were saying about the certainty thing what I got was as much as I love to play in uncertainty and like love spontaneity and jumping into the unknown I always come back to the certainty that I can trust in myself mm. so what I did was shut everyone else out build all the walls I needed let people close enough but still an arm's length distance to go okay I'm still safe because I'm relying on me I'm not relying on you you're just bonus what's interesting about that I, I did a Facebook live on this from Arizona like a week ago uh, 
I'm just now recognizing that those walls that I put up in a very similar way was like, I'm not, I'm, it's just me. I can mm -hmm. rely on myself yeah. and I'm not going to let any of that in because I don't want to feel that pain. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is all that shit still got in. <laughs> it all <laughs> still got in. It it's still in, it's You're still in my body. You don't share. And so the, the <laughs> thing is, I, I wasn't so processing true. through it, right? Yeah. So I put yeah. up these walls and they were here, but... All these other areas, it got through, and now, in order to, to really step in and, and open myself up more and recognize the divinity in everyone and, and, and feel safe on this planet, mm -hmm. I'm processing through all of that yeah. pain that I yeah. thought I wasn't feeling. Yeah. So you're not doing yourself any favors by putting those walls up. It's still getting through, and yeah. so it's just a matter of, are you willing to process it then, or do or you later. want to do it later? Well, and that's the kind of stuff that turns into deep disease. Yeah. Yeah, the kind yeah. of stuff that our body stores and it turns into cancer or, you know, just a, a breakdown in your body because your body cannot handle that much energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's, it's interesting because it's all connected and we all get to play with and process what's coming up for us in the moment because then we can just kind of live a cleaner life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I want to ask a fun question. What do you think, each one of us, what do you think is the most powerful thing that people can do in relationship? Touch each other's butts. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it up to the character. We will be taking a poll at the end of the video. Yes. No. <laughs> they're, 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 they're totally <laughs> playing it down. That's the thing. You guys give us this is me. To go no. This is me. This that is authentic. Is look at you this is authentic. authentic. That's, That's what I'm talk. saying. This is me. Authentic. Not <laughs> 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 talk. I'm just here. I'm just here, guys. Um, well, the most, the most impo well, powerful? I impactful, impactful or powerful thing that one can do in a relationship with another. <clears throat> Show up authentically. Mm -hmm. I think. I think the the listen. We don't have it all figured out. You know what I mean. I I, I coach and I'll do a Facebook live and that stuff. And what I'm sharing is my experience and what I'm committed to and what I'm, I've worked on within myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I show up in relationship with this beautiful goddess of a woman, uh, Rebel Queen. You like Rebel Queen more than goddess. Um, <laughs> I've requested. Yeah. <laughs> requested. Request. <laughs> All I can do is show up authentically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I do that... I'm not putting on a false pretense. I'm not pretending not to be a character or be a character. <laughs> yeah, you just I'm are. actually just just am. And that allows the person I'm in relationship, that allows you and you as friends. Mm -hmm. Trying to reconnect. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're and back. we're back. We're back in this BR. Hold on, we're plugging, we're plugging in because my battery is slow. So you were saying. I was just saying that, yeah, showing up authentically allows, it gives people uh, the chance to choose yeah. whether they want to be in a relationship with you. And if, and here's the thing, guys, if they choose to be in a relationship with you, whether that is, um, trust it, trust it, trust, trust, trust it. it. That says so it. much about you, Preston. Yeah. He's like, don't trust, don't trust. So, I didn't want to ruin whether, the thing. Whether, uh, whether they choose to be your friend, <laughs> whether they choose to be in a romantic relationship <laughs> with you or not. If you showed up authentically, yeah. then you can you can trust that that person was supposed to be in your life yep. or not, right? Yep. It's super freeing, too. It's just easier to live that way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I think is tricky about that is in order to show up authentically, you kind of have to know who you are. Boom. Yeah. I was so, just like, about to come here. Like, you, you know, in, in a sense, you showed up authentically for who you were for the first five years of our relationship, but, like, who you were was completely blocked off from your emotional experience. Not, not completely. <laughs> not completely. So, like, you not showed up sure. authentically, but, you know, only recently have you allowed yourself to really show up, like, as, like, the full you, right? But not if, I hid, if I hid that part of myself and I tried to be something different... Sure. We would have never gotten to this place. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the truth is, where you are right now, you're going to look back, you know, five, right. ten years from now and go, oh, I thought that was the fullest version. Right. And mm -hmm. that fullest version is going to keep unfolding. Okay, of course. My yeah. answer is, um, now that I've knocked yours. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've totally <laughs> shut <laughs> uh, My answer is, I think my answer is compassion. Mm. Mm. To me, compassion is when love meets understanding. Mm-hmm. 
So it's like, not only do I choose to love you, but I choose to, to do my very best to, to truly understand where you're coming from. Mm. Like, to mm -hmm. truly put myself in your position and to have compassion for you and for myself as we navigate mm -hmm. the kind of rocky parts of this relationship. Mm. Oh, I love sure. that. Yeah. Mm. What you got, P? Uh, most powerful, impactful thing anybody could do in a relationship, in my opinion, is fill their own damn cup. Mm -hmm. The more awesome you are, the more in touch with your freaking freakiness and your craziness and all of that stuff that makes up you, this explosion of goodness, this unique snowflake that will never happen ever again. The moment you can trust that thing and just play in it and fill it up and fill it up and fill it up and let it spill and let that, the overflow, be what you, you sort of bask in, to me, that is the most powerful thing anybody can do. Is, and most people call that selfish, but like, really, when I'm really loving on me, I am so available to love on her. Mm. I love that. Bra! Bra! Um, I would say for me, the most impactful thing you can do is not, I'm trying to figure out how to word this, not put your problems, your emotions, mm. your yes. life on the other person. Mm. Don't. Which is hard as hell. It's fucking hard. <laughs> Especially when you love somebody so much and your lives are so intertwined. To not put your outcome on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really big thing and it's been a huge learning for me as well because, you know, I love to feel really entrenched with someone. Like, I love that feeling of deep intimacy. And I'm learning how to have that deep intimacy without the attachment or the the need for him to carry me mm. um, and mm. it's like he carries me out of his own will and his own choice but there's no need for me for him to do that and that's been a huge lesson for me it's huge um, for everyone who can really take that on yeah yeah it's it's huge but it's been massive for me it's been it's been like a load has been lifted off of me and I feel like a load has been lifted mm. off of you as well because he cares for me so much and in the beginning of our relationship he wanted to hold what I needed somebody else to hold at that time and it was a lot for him and I feel like especially a lot of the women I coach we tend to do this to our men and, and we feel abandoned we feel left we feel like they don't care when they're not doing x y and z and that's not their job that's your job to take care of and then they get to show up and be the support system when they choose mm -hmm. and on the other side of that for for the men who are listening the ability to allow or to support your woman as she flourishes mm -hmm. without you carrying her yeah mm -hmm. yeah that that's is huge huge yeah. and it's it's um mm -hmm. The it's ability to, it's, it's a different, <laughs> it's a different kind of masculinity yeah, to, yeah. to be there yeah. and just be there ready to support in whatever way that she may want, yeah. but not feeling like you need to. No. Yeah. Mm. That's huge. You, you know, we were just at the Awakened Woman Conference and Alex in Bali. in Bali and Alexi was speaking and after it was over, we had this sort of brief moment where it was a little break and uh, a few women came up and they went, isn't she just so amazing? Like, like, aren't you just so lucky to have her? And I looked them right in the eyes and said, yeah, she is. And it, it's great. And I am, I wouldn't call it lucky, but like, <clears throat> later on, I got in another conversation about that very thing. And I find that mm, it can be hard Challenging, not hard. Challenging for some men to have their women shine more than them. Mm -hmm. to, for their, to have their women make more money than them. To have their women not need them in any way. So this, it's a paradox, right? Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> awesome. Yeah, go fucking be awesome and don't need me, but please need me. Yeah, because, it's such a fine line. Because, you know, we're social beings. We're all in this thing together. And just because you can doesn't mean you should. And so, mm -hmm. ladies, like Alexi and I are doing this all the time in the airport. She puts a million things in a bag. The bag is about 3,000 pounds. <laughs> it's really just my laptop. And then she tries to carry the bag. And <laughs> I'm always like, give me the bag, right? So, of course, she can carry the damn bag. But later on, she's gonna, her neck's going to be hurting and all that stuff. But, like, just because she can doesn't mean she should, yeah. right? And that's a way in which you can relinquish some of that... Uh, 
masculine masculinity to your man if you are the breadwinner and the one out in front and doing the damn thing and taking care of the kids while going to work and going to soccer practice if you're doing all that and he no longer has to go out and slay the beast and all of that stuff relinquish some of mm -hmm. the yeah. masculine by allowing him to do small things like if just stand in front of a door like <laughs> waiting. just have the door like waiting. this and waiting he's like what are you doing Oh, I'm just waiting for you to open the door. <laughs> awesome. You act like a tree, like a queen, you'll be treated like one. Yeah, and that goes into that whole conversation of, you know, a lot of people are striving for their independence. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, well, I just need to be independent. I don't need anybody. I can take care of myself. But independence has that kind of arm out thing where it's like, I don't need anyone. Let me take care of myself. I can only rely on me, so you can only get so close. And it's interdependence that we really want to move into in relationship, and that's what we've been working on is how can we learn to be there for one another, support one another, help each other rise mm -hmm. without needing mm -hmm. one another. And I think a lot of it's energetic, mm -hmm. right? A lot of it is do, does she feel like at any point she could come down and break down in my arms, and mm -hmm. I will be there for mm -hmm. her. And she doesn't have to do that. I don't have yep. to actually play Just that role. Permission. But yeah. does she feel energetically like that she can? Mm -hmm. And just that. Yes, and I choose to. Yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> just that energy All the time. Is, is, I think, the, is super healthy yep. to know that. I have a um, question for you. I have do a question too. And then let's do 10 minutes. 10 minutes, guys, and we're all 10 minutes. 10, 10, 10. I, my question is since you guys are so, I mean, you're living and breathing this work, right? Like, you are fully embodying the work. And sometimes, especially when there's like an argument or your partner's going through something, it's, it can be difficult to not like coach oh, yeah. your partner. Oh, yes. So does that, how does that show up for you guys? It's so funny. We were just talking about this in Bali with another coach friend of ours yeah. who mm -hmm. asked the same question. Um, I believe that for us, we started out coaching each other for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> and then we realized that didn't work too well because we both of us are controllers and don't like being told what to do. <laughs> She's super stubborn and so am I. So, we're so both like, didn't work. Like, you're making me, I can't make you feel anything. I can't anything. make you feel anything. It's the worst thing. Yeah. It's so true. Exactly. What within but you is being triggered right so now? so annoying. Which, I can't so make you feel anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's so annoying. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think what we've done and what we've done really well is kind of what you said Melinda it's, it's being in that compassionate space where you're mm -hmm. allowing the other person to be in their experience yeah. if they're being in it responsibly mm -hmm. and you're having compassion for what they're being with and seeing the bigger picture not taking it personally mm -hmm. so seeing it as okay my partner they're hurting right now what are they really looking for mm -hmm. can I find what's underneath the thing because mm -hmm. there's always something underneath the thing mm -hmm. and let me go straight to the source mm -hmm. and that's really supported us because the, the coaching thing happens when we're both trying to fight for our ideas to be the right ones. Mm. And the coaching dissolves when we're there for one another mm. and we're truly in the presence of listening, compassion, how can I serve and support. And so is that same thing true then for clients? Like, is it really more powerful to not coach someone trying to be for like, sure. I know what you're right, but, but basically just be there with them and be in curiosity and, passion. and exactly. space. Same exact thing. Same thing. So, so it is essentially coaching, Yeah. but it's what the best coaches do. That's yes. <laughs> it's the elite coaches. The best coaches, coaches don't seem like they're coaching when they're coaching. Yeah. Um, couple things. Um, let's do a speed round. Ooh, and let's okay. think of really tough questions and you have to answer them really fast, okay? Oh okay. So wait, Adam had a question too. I, I want to go. Is it a tough question? Do it. Speak no, I just want to. I want to know. Um, for me, I've never been in a relationship like this. Mm -hmm. Neither of you have been married before, so I assume you've never been in a relationship like never. this one. No. What is the th biggest surprise that you found in this relationship, taking a relationship to this level? For me, it's so easy, and that is fun. Mm -hmm. I love being married. I think it's awesome. I love Alexi. She's super quirky and weird and does a lot of stuff you guys don't see. So um, say that. <laughs> she's like a super character that nobody like it's like really funny. She has you could sing a song right now. It could be anything. It could be ba da ba 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 well let's not do that one because McDonald's sucks. Um, <laughs> let's not perpetuate. No, McDonald's. whatever the song is, 
she will be singing it within 30 minutes. It's an unconscious thing. Unconsciously. She has all these little quirks. I'm like Rain Man. And yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like a mentally interesting <laughs> mentally Rain Man. Mentally interesting. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Borderline. Uh -huh. The point is that she's on the spectrum. I find <laughs> that this is the funnest relationship I've ever been in. Mm. Ever. Oh. And I find that it is the funnest. One of the reasons why that is the case is because I've given myself the permission to have fun. And... <laughs> I chose well. Um, yeah, the, you did. the universe chose well. <laughs> God chose well by matching us together because we're both pretty nuts um, in our own True. way. So for me, that's easy. Fun. Fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, the, the biggest surprise was that I could have it all. Mm. I think for a mm -hmm. long time, especially as a woman, I was like, oh, well, I can have like nine out of the ten. Mm -hmm. um, I could have someone who's got <sighs> X, Y, and Z, but doesn't have that one key element. And I think for a long time, you know, I've been really blessed. I've dated some amazing men in my life. Um, they ugly as hell, though. No. <laughs> they're all handsome. They're all amazing. They're all incredible human beings. That's enough about them. <laughs> but <laughs> what I recognized is when I met Preston, it was like, it was the whole package. And here's, here's the paradox. It was <laughs> the whole package in a package that I, I didn't recognized was my type of package. It's because he's dressed like a character. No. Yeah, he was I totally dressed like a character. All black. Wearing capes. <laughs> I don't wear any capes. No, this is true. So when I first All met the Preston, the way he dressed was highly triggering. She thought I was gay. I just, I... Which is really messed up. I thought he was like a mis... A it's mis not messed up, because gay people are awesome. I thought it was a mix between Prince and Lenny Kravitz. That's how I described him to my friends. I'm like, I met this guy Lenny who's Kravitz. dope. But he dresses really weird. And like, I've always been the bohemian one. And like, yeah. he's kind of bohemian. You hear this stuff? And she just said she had it all. But and wait, now so I'm... here's the thing. So what I realized was, within that, I get the person who's on a mission like I am. In a crazy, obsessive way. And I love that. <gasps> a person who's hilarious and weird. I love that. A person who's fashionable and stylish and sexy. I love that. A person who's a good human being and has integrity. I have the whole package. But when I was first looking, I wasn't really looking, but when I was first looking at the package, it didn't come in the package I thought it would come in. Mm -hmm. And this is really important for people to get because the, the things that triggered me about him, I took on for myself and I looked at mm -hmm. and I recognized that the way he dressed, it wasn't the way he dressed, it was how free he was in his choice in to express himself. Expression. But there's, there's a fine and balance. I, no! I hadn't been that free yet. <laughs> And that was but something I wanted. The, okay. and there, but there's a fine balance <laughs> there because the, the trick where you go too far with it, I think, is people will say, well, it doesn't look like the package that I want, mm -hmm. but it will work. It'll turn into yeah, it yeah, over yeah. time. No, right? no. So there's a fine balance. You ain't changing. Far. The tiger ain't changing his stripes unless he wants to. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. If you can look at it and go, why, why does this particular thing about it not resonate mm -hmm. with me and take responsibility for it? <laughs> you have an opportunity to grow and to learn something about yourself, either for that person or for your next partnership. Oh, uh, get him, baby. Uh, yeah. Get him. Okay, speed round? Speed round. Speed round. So... Hmm. Questions with Preston. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. This is the hot seat. Hot seat. Oh, oh, <laughs> All right. This is how, does this, how does this work? Do you just ask questions? I'm going to ask everyone, questions. Just I just want to say hi to all Do the people who are on real quick. Um, we're seeing all your names, but they go so fast on this new so Facebook fast. Live. You guys are we amazing. See, we see your thing for a second. So we love you. We see you. I'm seeing so many amazing peeps on here. And for everyone who's been joining us for the entire time, you guys rock. You're awesome. awesome. I just put a Google form in the thing. If you guys want to join our activation now or never activation team as well um we are doing something really special we're coming out with a book december 27th i'm just Soon. plugging this in here real quick um december 27th we're creating a little awesome team of superheroes that we're going to do something special for um and those superheroes are going to support us in making sure this book gets to as many people as possible yeah. i put the link in there if you want to fill out the short application we would love for you to do so um, if not, it's all good, but we're looking for a little mini team of awesome soft Super people stars. to get in deep with us and figure out how we gonna get this message out. Yeah, I'm uh, saying. All right. <laughs> okay. Character, we're gonna vote at the end no, of the no show. No, no one's voting now that because that's I am really silly today. You should have heard <laughs> their today. conversation. Just today. They, they were talking normal. about deep portals Go and... Go ahead. Ask 
ask me about fifth dimensional consciousness person, do it. See? You know you want to. Right now, I need to do it. All right. Would you rather? Uh oh. Here it goes. Would you rather? Would you rather? Let's go dark sometimes, though. Yeah, they go super dark. They've been known to go very dark. I've been given the option to eat poop on a smelly bus. Yeah. Was that for me? That was for me. Who is poop? Yeah. I forget. It was unclassified. Okay. <laughs> who is your current, it's not, who, would you rather, who's your current um, sort of obscure, weird obsession that not many people know about? David. Same weird, obscure <laughs> session, obsession that I've had for a long time. I already know it. Which is Angela Jolie. I adore her. I want to make sweet, sweet love to You're her. You're going to use that wow. one and not the lizards or the Palladians wow. or any of the other things no. you talk no, about? No, she, she owns been, that. People that, know yeah, that. People know it's been that. Angie for a while. It's been Angie but that's not that. weird and obscured. She, everybody knows her. I'm talking about the stuff that you say when this camera's not rolling. This is questions with Preston with the answers he wants you to say. I already got the answers. <laughs> That's yeah. the game we're playing right, right now. Palladian, Palladian. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm totally happy that's not obscure to me anymore. It's like, to them, totally, it is. Okay. Um, so Angelina <laughs> Jolie, babe, own it. Own it. I, she I will it. own it. She said Kim she wants Kardashian. to make sweet love. I did. Yeah. Angie, so if you're out there. <laughs> sweet love happening yes. over here. Right. So if we're going to go there, would you guys be open to... No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> all right, Adam. What? What you got for him? Um, Adam, tell us why you refuse to grow your facial hair. <laughs> Adam, I so every time we travel, uh, Preston tells me to grow facial hair. So if you see, if you go back through my Facebook, you'll see some videos where I have facial hair. That's because oh, Preston <laughs> kept saying you cannot shave for the rest of this trip. That becomes a thing when you're traveling for like four months. Yeah. So um, also, Preston has planted seeds of making Adam feel like no. it'll be more manly for him. No, to it's have. not manly. Yes. Tell him what you said. She As called Preston him. Looks like a lumberjack. She called him a dirty pirate hooker. No, pirate Frenchman. A dirty Frenchman. She called him a dirty Frenchman, and now he won't grow it out. No. And so, as his friend, I'm here saying. Dude, you said that. That is absolutely true. Oh, she definitely said that. Oh, I definitely but that's not that. the reason that I'm not growing it out. That's not the, the, the reason. Because I grew it out. I he grew did, it out. He did. He had it out. We'll have people vote. You guys can vote. Say facial hair or no facial hair. I don't. Yeah, first, you have to know what it looks like. I vote no. Adam is 68 years old. <laughs> I'm a no. And he constantly has his 10 year old face. All I'm saying is, for once, before you turn 75, grow the hair out, see what it looks like, turn into a hippie. You're already a hippie. Fully. Just go there. Let us see it. Yeah. I would like to know, Preston, mm -hmm. why are you so invested in having Adam grow out his facial hair? Because I think it's fun. <laughs> I think it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. So, awesome. Alexi, yeah. question for you. Here we Answer go. Answer maybe. Answer maybe. <laughs> um, I want to know, what is the... You've traveled so freaking much, right? I have. Do you have any interest in traveling alone? Oh. And if you do, you where would you leave go? Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, great question. I absolutely have interest in traveling alone. I've done it before. Um, there's something really freeing about being on your own time. And I consider myself a very like highly considerate person. So when I'm traveling with people, I want to make sure everyone's having a good time, good experience. And when I travel by myself, it's all about me, which feels really cool. And I can really kind of let serendipity happen. Mm -hmm. Now, if I went somewhere by myself, I feel like I would go... I just want you to know that she's fully on the chair. I literally <laughs> I don't am. have any of the chair. Here. This is the type of stuff I'm that happens all the time. Chair. Okay, let me not fully take When over we the chair. sleep, th let me just, I gotta say this. So the bed is this big, right? Apparently this is, we sleep on a Here's the half of the, of the bed, right? This is the middle part of the bed. The bed is this big. Here's the middle part. Literally every night, no matter what, I'm sleeping at the very edge here and Alexi is right here. And the rest of the bed is open. Here's the best part. <laughs> if I were to pull my snuggle away from him, he'd be very sad. So uh, be careful what you wish for. Sometimes, Sometimes I literally things. fall off the edge. That's how things. much she's putting her thigh of good hope on me. Okay, so where, where would you <laughs> where like would to go? go? Where, would you go? Uh, where would I go? I think I would go... I feel like I'd go to like the Amazon. Or somewhere mm -hmm. like really remote. Or like... Dark and sexy. Papua New Guinea Without or something. Me. Like... She's gonna see some bush dudes, and they're gonna try to <laughs> swing the little dinglings in front of you. Yeah. I see. I see. No, because I feel like it would be a really enriching trip, kind of um, historically and with nature, and there would just be so much to explore, and I love exploring. Mm. Yeah, 
and I feel like I would be totally enraptured by it. All right, this shit is over. We about to get into a fight. Well, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we love you guys. You guys are amazing and awesome and beautiful. Follow these two, Adam Roa, and Melinda Cohen. Um, if you're not following my hubby, do it. What are you waiting for? Don't look, be ridiculous. Look, look, look. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Um, and what else? Yeah. And if you guys want to be a part of the activation squad, the activation team for now or never, our new book coming out in less than a month. It's going to be dope. Okay? It's going to be dope. I'll show you guys the dope. cover. This uh, is not like... Oh, you got the cover? Well, this is... It's our like advanced uncorrected copy. Oh. So that's... Our this book. is the first we're seeing of it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen the oh, movie cover. Here, we'll give you guys a copy. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for dedicated, amazing, amazing, awesome sauce human beings who want to be a part of a movement and help this book. These are the five principles that underlie and hold all of our work, and we want this to get out to as many people as possible uh, so we can start living in an awakened world, which sounds pretty awesome. Yep. Yeah. Love you guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you so you guys. much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thank you. Sure. Bye, Sarah. Bye. 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 Bye.